Welcome to Titan's Machine, where the world's most powerful industrial systems come to life. Today, we explore modern sawmilling, tracing a log's journey from raw timber to precision-engineered lumber across Europe and North America, each region revealing its own machines, methods, Stepping into the forest, it becomes clear that this landscape is not just scenery. It is a workplace defined by skill and calculation. A logger stands before a towering tree, studying its lean, center of gravity, wind, and terrain. Only after reading every clue hidden in the bark does the work begin. The notch is cut first, a V-shaped opening dictating the fall direction. Then comes the back cut slightly higher, perfectly level with a wedge inserted to keep the bar from pinching. A thin hinge of wood remains, acting as the pivot that controls the fall. The trunk trembles, cracks echo, and then gravity completes the task, a perfectly controlled descent where human precision meets natural force. But felling the tree is only the beginning. Terrain dictates extraction. In the mountains of Scandinavia and North America, cable yarding systems stretch across valleys. Logs travel in midair along steel lines, bypassing the chaos of the ground. In flatlands, people would operate log haulers, machines with oversized tracks, and hydraulic forks that pulled tons of logs through controlled forest roads. Along rivers, logs float like ancient cargo. Water becomes the conveyor, moving wood through long distances with almost no energy cost. And where roads are available, heavy logging trucks haul multi-ton loads out of the forest, each one engineered to survive brutal terrain. Our first stop, AKZ, Latvia, here. The forest hands its materials to modern engineering. Founded in 2009, AKZ may be young, but its operations display a discipline many older mills strive to achieve. The interior hums with synchronized machinery. Log cranes rotate massive trunks with surgical precision. Sorting begins immediately, roundness, straightness, and growth patterns evaluated by both craftsmen and automated sensors. Every log is treated as a finite resource because it is. The debarker strips away the bark with powerful rotors, exposing clean raw wood for primary breakdown. Band saws and circular saws then divide the log into center pieces and sideboards. Edges are trimmed. Lengths are set. Boards are distributed across storage bays like mail sorted into a vast mechanical post office. Drying is where most of the final quality is decided. AKZ operates 13 computer-controlled kilns. Temperature, humidity, 
airflow all calibrated to bring wood to a stable moisture content. Only then does the lumber enter the planing line. Six hundred meters per minute. Eight planing heads, each carrying thirty blades. The machine shaves off layers so fast the eye can barely follow. After planing, mechanical grading begins. DAE technology tests structural strength. The FinScan imaging system evaluates knots, defects, and natural characteristics. Boards are strapped, wrapped, or treated in preservation tanks depending on their destination. Nothing is wasted, bark becomes fuel, sawdust becomes pellets, chips become raw material for other industries. This is modern timber engineering total utilization. But the journey doesn't end at the mill. This is the point where raw material becomes part of everyday life. After leaving Melvin's high-precision sorting systems and thermal laboratories, these spruce and pine boards begin their transition into the consumer world. What once stood as green gold in Scandinavian forests will soon become flooring, roofing structures, window frames, the robotic unloading, and 3D mapping ensure that every millimeter of wood is used purposefully because people will live with this material for decades. Stairs children run up and down. Beams that carry the weight of entire houses. From Finland's Koskisen, where automation borders on futuristic too, the story continues beyond efficiency. Those boards flying off the rip saw at 180 meters per minute are destined for construction companies, furniture, factories, and home goods manufacturers. Sideboards become cabinet frames. Center cuts become tabletops and shelving. Superior boards become structural components inside modern homes. Even the packaging robots play a role, making sure each shipment arrives flawless to the end manufacturer. One railway line of wood transport leaves homes in Finland every day. Not just wood, but also future products that people will use and use tin for. across Europe. Hardwood from Germany's cotton brock enters a completely different universe of consumption. This isn't commodity lumber. This is premium material for luxury interiors. Dining tables with century-old grain hand, high-end flooring own, handcrafted cabinets, musical instruments, architectural features inside hotels and offices. The manual NHLA grading and the traditional sticker stacking, all of that precision exists for a reason, because hardwood consumers demand perfection. A single knot or mineral streak can change the value of an entire board.
This global chain from Nordic forests to American living rooms reveals a simple truth. Wood isn't just a manufacturing material. It's a living record that becomes part of human spaces. The documentary ends, but the story of wood continues in our homes, our furniture, our architecture, and our daily lives. Thank you for watching Titan's Machine. If you want more journeys from industry to real-world impact, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode.